Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 175. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics released the 20th of May 2015, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Uncanny X-Men number 34. Mystique returns to the pages of Uncanny X-Men, and she's out for vengeance. Will Magic's Soul Sword be enough to halt the shapeshifter's wrath? With issues 34 and 35 remaining before issue 600, the conclusion of his X-Men run, series writer Brian Michael Bendis announced this week that the issue has been postponed. Quote, It was bumped until after Secret Wars for editorial and commercial reasons. Not my call. This was Marvel, but they have their reasons. It will not affect the story or the impact of the story. In fact, it may have more impact on how things shake out after my run, but I promise you it could easily ship this month as it was supposed to. It has been written, pages are already in, as many of the collaborators have said so on Twitter. Close quote. Number two, we've got Star Wars number five. The greatest space adventure of all time continues as Luke goes home in search of the truth about his late mentor. Leia takes Han on a secret mission of vital importance to the Rebellion. Unfortunately, they both run into some unfriendly encounters. Star Wars editor Jordan White spoke about the challenge of Luke Skywalker in the series. It, I mean, it can be difficult because a lot of times you think of Luke Skywalker and you think, well, he's a Jedi and he can do things. He can't. He doesn't know how to do anything yeah. with the Force at this point. He's never had a real lightsaber fight in yeah. his life. Um, he's still more prone to go he's for a his blaster. blaster. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's it's a it's a different version of the character than we might always think of in our heads. But it's been fun to to work with him and, and, and show him growing. At number three, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy number 27, Guardians No More. Following the Black Vortex, the Guardians have come into conflict with one another more and more. With rifts forming between them, will their friendship and history be enough to hold the team together? Series writer Brian Michael Bendis explained the transition of Guardians of the Galaxy into Guardians of Nowhere, the Secret Wars title. Quote, it sometimes seems that everything is polarizing, but in this instance, there are a couple of things that are going to happen in Guardians of the Galaxy number 27, which will cause a shift. Then there will be the end of Guardians of Nowhere, which will reveal itself when we come out of Secret Wars and whatever form the Guardians take after the event is over. My mandate, and the mandate of a lot of others at Marvel, is the point of Secret Wars is to be additive. There's always a lot of death and destruction, but adding things to the Marvel Universe is a joyful birthing process. That's very exciting to me, and each one of the books I'm doing brings something into the Marvel Universe that wasn't there before. If you do that enough times, you're really going to have an exciting Marvel Universe where you don't know exactly what's going to happen and what's going to come next. Close quote. At number four, we've got Daredevil number 15.1, The Life and Times of Daredevil, 50 Years in the Making. Originally scheduled for April, Marvel issued a press release with more details than they had in the solicit. Quote, Experience the life and times of Matt Murdock is told by his Eisner Award-winning creative team as well as a few guest creators in Daredevil number 15.1, an oversized special featuring superstar talents of Mark Wade, Chris Samney, Mark Guggenheim, and Peter Krause. Matt Murdock, now publicly revealed as the man behind the Daredevil mask, has begun working on his highly anticipated autobiography. As the man without fear begins to dust off the cobwebs of his past adventures, who knows what untold stories might shake loose. What happens when Daredevil catches a murderer while out on patrol only to have to defend him in the court the very next day? Mark Guggenheim and Peter Krauss have the answers. Matt's double life leads to some hard choices. Then Daredevil artist extraordinaire Chris Samney writes and illustrates his first horn-headed tale as the man without fear of yesteryear comes face to face with El Diablo. Prepare for a devil versus devil throwdown the likes of which you've never seen before. Rounding out this oversized issue is new material from the monthly Daredevil team of Wade and Samney that will have fans on the edge of their seat. This April, relive the greatest untold stories of Hell's Kitchen's greatest guardian with Daredevil 15.1. Close quote. And at number five, we've got Ultimate End number one of five. Miles Morales and the rest of the heroes of the Ultimate U face final extinction. As the end of their world becomes inevitable, will the hero's heartbreaking sacrifices make any difference? The dramatic end of an era begins here. Series writer Brian Michael Bendis shared, quote, Here's what I want to say about this. What you're getting here is the first announcement past Secret Wars. What you're going to get a sense of from here on out is that these are not tie-ins in the traditional sense. These are very important pieces of the Marvel Universe and for these characters. The tie-ins themselves are actually an event unto themselves. This would be its own event if there wasn't a Secret Wars. These are gigantic stories and very important, and what comes out on the other side is going to be different. These series are setting you up and letting you know what pieces are coming out the other side. 
That's what I'm thinking this first storyline represents. Look how big this is. This is the end of something gigantic we've been working on for 15 years. This isn't the craziest thing that's going to happen. Close quote. Rounding out the top ten at number six, we have Powers number three, an all-new chapter in the Eisner Award-winning series that turns the police procedural on its head. Walker and Dean are reunited and discover things about each other they never knew, even after all these years. Plus, an unsolvable Powers case that could determine the fate of the entire Powers department. Read the comic book and see the brand new Powers TV show on the PlayStation Network. The letter column will feature exclusive behind-the-scenes info on the show from executive producer Brian Michael Bendis. At number 7, we have Secret Wars Battle World number 1 of 4. When the Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universe collide, there's only Battle World, featuring the fights, battles, and blow-ups that are just too big for Secret Wars. When a Doctor Strange-possessed Punisher goes on the run, only Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hulk, and Ghost Rider can track him down. Question, what happens when MODOK recruits every single MODOK ever for his evil schemes? Answer, MODOK Madness. At number 8, we've got Spider-Verse number 1. Spinning out of the Spider-Verse event, a team of spiders finds themselves face-to-face -face with Battle World, starring Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man War, Spider-Man India, Mayday Parker, Spider-UK, and Spider-Ham. At number 9, we have Planet Hulk number 1, a forbidden zone of wild hulks, a battle-worn gladiator named Steve Rogers, a journey that could break the spirit of the world's greatest freedom fighter, plus a backup story by Surprise Creative Team. At number 10, we have Convergence number 7 of 8. The largest battle in the history of the multiverse is here. Who will win and who will lose when Deimos battles the combined might of the Earth 2 survivors, the heroes from Kingdom Come, the Titans, and Parallax? All this and more as the heroes of the New 52 join the fight. Now, similar to last week, this week's tie-ins include 8-page previews of post-convergence books coming in June. So in addition to each solicit saying, starring heroes from Crisis on Infinite Earths, they also all say... This extra-sized issue includes a sneak peek at what's coming up in the DC Universe. However, I have included the specific preview info for each book. So with that in mind, for the best of the rest from DC Comics, we have Convergence, Adventures of Superman number 2 of 2. Superman and Supergirl's journey through the Phantom Zone takes a tragic turn as one of the most devastating moments in DC's history is revealed. Supergirl could save herself, but only if she sacrifices Metropolis to the marauding intelligent apes from Commandai's world. Features a bonus Martian Manhunter story, Jones investigates the disappearance of a lunar mission and uncovers the beginnings of a planet-wide invasion of Earth by his fellow Martians who he thought were previously all dead. Next, we have Convergence, Batman and the Outsiders, number two of two. Batman leads the Outsiders against a terror from the Great Disaster, Godmaker and Omac. Features a bonus Batman Beyond story. Tim Drake in the Batman Beyond suit has been thrown 35 years into the future. This new world he's exploring is a mix of the animated series world and the legendary Great Disaster world. Brother I will be the villain of the first arc, defeated at the end. The second arc will feature the return of the Justice League Beyond and more bizarreness from the Great Disaster world. We've also got Convergence Green Lantern Corps number 2 of 2. The Green Lantern Corps is revived when Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, and Guy Gardner power up and race to take on Hercules Unbound and Anti-God from the Great Disaster. Features a bonus Gotham Academy story. Maps recites her newest homework assignment for Olive, a poem about the supernatural adventures, both imagined and real, of Gotham Academy. Next, we have Convergence Hawkman number 2 of 2. Hawkman, Hawkgirl, and Thangarian shadow agents set out to destroy the deadly bat people and rat people of the land of Commandi. Features a bonus Grayson story. Dick and Spiral join the Mile High Club as they attempt to save a young boy from an airplane mid-flight. We've also got Convergence Justice League of America number 2 of 2. Witness the final stand of the Detroit Justice League as they fight to survive against the Tangent Universe. Features a bonus Batman-Superman story, on the trail of Cybertech warriors, a depowered Superman meets Batman, and they fight, but an unexpected savior comes to the rescue. Next we have Convergence, New Teen Titans number 2 of 2, Titans together, no more, when they face the might of the Tangent Doom Patrol. Is this the end of what many consider the greatest Titans team in the history of the multiverse? Features a bonus Robin, son of Batman story. Damien's quest to atone for the year of blood takes him to a remote mountain village, but danger awaits him and his unwilling companion, Goliath, and someone connected to Damien's dangerous past may be closing in on him. We've also got Convergence, Superboy, and the Legion of Superheroes, number 2 of 2. Brainiac 5 and Superboy are from one of the most advanced worlds under the Convergence Dome, but nothing can prepare them for the all-out war they now find themselves in against the Atomic Knights. 
features a bonus Teen Titans story. The Titans and Superboy are on the run from Wonder Girl and Power Girl's new super team. Next, we have Convergence Swamp Thing number two of two. Swamp Thing finds his connection to the green renewed, but isn't enough to help him survive the onslaught of the Red Rain vampire Batman. Features a bonus Catwoman story. Selina attends a party with a guest list of some of Gotham's most power-hungry crime bosses. We've also got Convergence The Flash number two of two. Barry Allen lashes out against the heroes of the Tangent Universe as he tries to protect Gotham City from Convergence. Features a bonus new Suicide Squad story on a mission in Ukraine where the team fights Russian red robots. In the DCU, yes, there is a Russian military in the Ukraine. Imagine that. Next, we have Convergence Wonder Woman number two of two. Diana Prince gets blood on her jumpsuit as she takes on vampire versions of the Joker and the rest of the Red Rain ghouls. Features a bonus Secret Six story written by Gail Simone. Six outcasts, or seven if you count the murderous puppet, are thrown together and forced to carry out deadly missions by an anonymous force that hates their guts. They'll have to learn how to become a team pretty quickly as survival is not guaranteed. We've also got The Kitchen, number 7 of 8. Kath, Raven, Angie, and Tommy hunt a desperate Jimmy after his failed attempt to take back control of Hell's Kitchen. But this isn't any ordinary night. This is the New York City blackout of 77, and with the police barely able to contain the widespread looting and arson, chaos reigns in the streets. And we've got Mad Max Fury Road, Nux, and Immortan Joe, number 1. In a fallen world ravaged by oil and water wars, humanity exists without law or mercy. All those who wander the wastelands are ruled by a single imperative, survive. Among them is Max Rokotansky, a road warrior haunted by his turbulent past. It's hard to know who is more crazy, me or everyone else. In this first issue, witness the rise of Colonel Joe Moore, a war hero turned tyrannical warlord, the Immortan Joe. And don't miss the story of Nux, one of the Immortan's war boys who knows only the chaos into which he was born. From the mind of George Miller, the creator of the Mad Max trilogy, comes a brand new epic tale that serves as a prelude to the upcoming film Mad Max Fury Road. From Marvel Comics, we've got A-Force number 1. Marvel's Mightiest Women finally get their own explosive series. In a secluded corner of the battle world, an island nation is fiercely protected by a team of Avengers, the likes of which has only ever been glimpsed before. Fighting to protect the small sliver of their world that's left, the amazing A-Force stands shoulder to shoulder, ready to take on the Horde. Next, we have Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars number 1 of 4. Not a Secret Wars tie-in. Well, it is, but not that Secret Wars. Remember the original Secret Wars from 1984? And remember how Deadpool played a huge important role in it? Wait, you don't? Then you need to read this series immediately and be educated. From the team that brought you Deadpool Killustrated comes the most secretist war of all, plus a bonus Deadpool contest of champions tale. We've also got Deathlock number 8, Henry Hayes knocks on Biotech's door, loudly. Michael Collins and Agent Hope have Domino, aim can't be far behind. Next, we have Master of Kung Fu, number one of four. Welcome to the mystical land of Kun Lun, where the study of martial arts reigns supreme. In a world where everyone is well-trained in at least some form of deadly combat, what becomes of a drunken dropout failure? If anyone speaks out against Emperor Zhu, the price is their head. Good thing Shang-Chi's a man of discretion and... Oh, who are we kidding? This is gonna get nasty. And we've got Moon Knight number 15. There's a monster under the beds of the children of Manhattan and he's hungry. Many children have already fallen to the beast's hunger and it's up to Moon Knight to stop it. From Image Comics, we've got the Fade Out number 6. Brubaker and Phillips' best-selling series ever just keeps hitting. Charlie and his blacklisted friend Gil hunt Hollywood's back alleys for answers to Valeria Summers' murder and cover-up, but the one man who might know something, ex-child star Flapjack Jones, has gone into hiding unless he's dead in a ditch by the side of the road. And we've got Captara number two, Manton, Dartor, Motivational Orb, Heroes for the Ages. As they set out to save Earth, our hero Keith Kanga retires into a life of luxury on Captara. But can he resist the siren song of guilt? A perfect jumping on point for people who've read issue one. <laughs> And from Valiant Entertainment, we've got Bloodshot Reborn, number two. New York Times bestselling writer Jeff Lemire and rising superstar Miko Soyayan continue their bold reimagining of this classic Valiant icon. The man once known as the unstoppable killing machine called Bloodshot must track down the imposters carrying out mass shootings in his former name. But the hunter becomes the hunted when an upstart FBI investigator and her grizzled partner believe the original Bloodshot himself to be responsible for the murders. Can Bloodshot elude the agents and his own inner demons long enough to take out a nanite-infused gunman? 
And we've got Ninjack number three, Ninjack's to-do list for May. One, subvert the largest, most dangerous weapons dealer in the world. Two, focus on not letting your tortured childhood distract you. Three, push your memories of loss so far down that you forget how to feel. Four, betray everyone you know. Five, don't get killed. Repeat as necessary. Your to-do list for May. One, drop everything and pick up Ninjack number three by acclaimed team of Matt Kent, Clay Mann, and Butch Goose. Repeat as necessary. Out in trades this week, we've got Uncanny X-Men Volume 4 vs. S.H.I.E.L.D. trade paperback. Revolution is over. The war has begun. Cyclops and his Uncanny X-Men are tired of the hunt. After another near-fatal Sentinel attack, they take the fight to S.H.I.E.L.D. Maria Hill claims she doesn't know who's building the Sentinels, but she hasn't stopped them either. She's relying on Dazzler, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s mutant liaison, to help defuse the situation. But Dazzler lies incapacitated in Mystique's headquarters, and Mystique makes a convincing imitation. And where's Magneto, the former head of the mutant movement? Then, it's an original sin tie-in as Charles Xavier's last will and testament is discovered, but what's concealed within its pages might be the X-Men's ultimate undoing. Could a previously unknown power now be their greatest threat? How will the uncanny X-Men cope with the shadows of Xavier's past? Collects Uncanny X-Men number 19 through 25. And we've got Ex Machina Volume 5 trade paperback. In this last Ex Machina collection featuring issues 41 through 50 and Ex Machina Special number 4, Mayor Hundred descends into the sewers of New York City to learn why he was given the strange powers that helped him become the Great Machine, while a powerful new foe reveals a terrifying plan that's been in the works since the series began. Then, in the very last Ex Machina adventure, will the mayor's new archenemy bring down his administration? Will the tragedies that Mayor Hundred warned about from the beginning come to pass? Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available, and I broke out all the Marvel titles this week into their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers, and you can find them all on my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com. And we'll also have links up on theleagueofnerds.com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find links to everything in the About section at he'sgotissues.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and The League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.